for predator control, there are a couple methods um, that I found work. Uh, for raccoons, um, and for, for most of everything, the electric fence is ultimately number one, as it's 95% uh, successful, uh, or roughly around 95%. And it doesn't uh, kill any small game, it just, uh, or kill anything, it's just a, a shock that deters the, uh, the predator from coming back. So um, in, uh, these electric uh, fences will um, uh, zap up to uh, an eighth inch of hair. So like a, the uh, the mink are quite uh, quite short haired, so only a little bit of, uh, touches the metal, and they're uh, and it's it's just a snap, and they get scared, and then they run back to their den. The same with raccoon. What height do you set this fence up? Uh, I like to set these uh, fences up at about three inches off the ground, and another about six inches, six to eight inches. So that way you're combating all predators. Um, the mink they are low, uh, like the otter, they're, they're low to the ground and they'll, they'll sleek in uh, underneath uh, like two inches and, and below, or sorry, uh, four inches. So uh, like that's why I like to have it about that area where if they try to sneak in, it'll touch their back and then that's when they, that's when they get scared and then they'll fire off. Uh, the raccoons are generally for the, um, for the six to eight inches because they're a bigger predator. So they can step over the wire no problem at three inches. So uh, if it's six, then it'll try to go in and at least one piece of fur will touch either the lower or the higher uh, a strand of that, uh, that metal banding for that electric fence. Will that work for the herons as well? It will, yes. Um, uh, like, because uh, they're, they're just walking along the, uh, the ground too, so uh, they'll be able to walk over the three inches, but they won't be able to walk over the six to eight. Now, the issue with the fence, of course, is uh, getting shocked, which of course it's uh, no fun, and I've been shocked probably four or five times now. Uh, it's no picnic. <laughs> so I could just imagine what it is for a creature and they, they won't come back and they generally never do. For the first time ever, I lost a koi in my three-year-old pond this oh. year. I'm assuming it was a heron just because a mink would have continued, I guess. Absolutely. Um, yes. But the one thing I noticed, maybe you could talk more about it, is the fact that after it was gone, I noticed it was gone, all the fish in my pond, which is about four feet deep, just sat together still on the bottom for days. I thought I had a water issue. Um, is that common? Uh, it is actually uh, because uh, once that fish was taken, uh, it was likely heron that uh, it got up too shallow and it sat on the edge and just picked that one off that it could get. It might have been slow, it might have been uh, uh, eating something uh, and just least expecting. And of course, if it's around for a long time and uh, these fish uh, see that too, then they get really paranoid and stressed out and will go to the, the safest point that they can in the deepest area. Uh, as away from uh, the predator, uh, of course, they, that's where the heron can't get them and the, um, uh, the raccoon as well. But a, a mink, if it was a mink, uh, it would have been wiped out in one night for sure. Everything. Yes. Right.